What's going on everyone? Sneaky Mofo here. Today I'm going to do a quick introduction to hex editors and scripting. And this is just to kind of show you what these two things are in the context of hacking games. So if you're unfamiliar with hex editors, maybe you've heard of them, as well as scripting, I'm just going to give you an example here based on something I did the other day. Um, so there's this game. I'm not going to mention it because they sell the game and they sell the music. They sell the music for twice the price of the game. And so I went looking around in the game files, um, actually just the folders in the game, uh, like after downloading from Steam or whatever, and there's a directory in there. There's a music directory. And these are the files from the game. So you see they have this .mv extension. So you know, seeing this immediately, it's kind of like, well, what is .mv? Is it proprietary? It could be something where their game engine unpacks these files, or, you know, it only it's the only thing that can read these files. So something like Media Player or VLC might not be able to read these. So you might have to reverse engineer the file format. Chances are, if a game is popular enough, someone else out there has done it, so you could just look for, like, a decompiler. But before you go down that route, you can try checking a few things yourself. And one of the things is taking a look at the file um, in a hex editor. So uh, I have here this HXD. It's a free hex editor. It's going to accomplish the exact same thing that I'm getting ready to show you with the program that I prefer. So anyway, I'll have a link for this in the description so you can go download this and mess with that. But uh, here's the first thing that we're going to do. I know it's an audio file, or it should be an audio file because of the folder that it was located in. So I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to try to open it in VLC and see if it will play. So let's see. I don't know if you can hear it, but I have my volume turned down. But anyway, it's playing. So. Um, Maybe we don't have to do anything after all, you know? Let's try opening the second one and see what happens. VLC. All right, nothing. This one is not playing. So that's kind of odd. So if you go through the rest of these, you'll find that it's the same case as this one. They won't play. This one will. The rest of these will not. So then you open this one and you say, well, Let's open it in a hex editor and say, why why will this play versus the other ones? And sometimes you just get a lot of gibberish, like all this stuff. You can't really make sense of that. But each thing, each byte over here corresponds with a letter or a symbol or a number over on this side. So what you're seeing here is here. See how that's highlighting on the left as well? So these are the individual bytes that we can change, right? So we see that this says Og S, and then we see Vorbis. And if you know anything about audio formats, Og Vorbis is a very popular one. So it looks like these are nothing more than Og Vorbis files that have been renamed to uh, .mv. So if we were to change this to .ogg, since it's an Og Vorbis file. Okay, it changes to the VLC icon because VLC recognizes Og Vorbis media files, and that one plays. Um, the other ones, if we change that and tried that, it still wouldn't work. So what we want to do then is open the second one in a hex editor. And now, let's see, I have two instances of 010 set up to open. So now if you actually compare these side by side, um, you'll see that from here down in both of these is basically exactly the same. So from this section up, it's different. You have some different bytes. See this little C character here, and then there's an 8. But this still says Vorbis here, and then we see Og S, and this says the same thing. So Initially, what I did was, remember from this, this part, this T, Y, 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 all the way down, we can see that that's the same in these files. 
but from here up it's different. So you could literally try copying these bytes from the file that we know works and pasting them over this. I tried that and that didn't work. So another observation that you might make, which I ended up making, is that here at the very beginning of the file it says og s. This is the file that works. And the one that doesn't work, there's c squiggly sign gs. And in all the rest of the files, 3.mv, 4.mv, it's all the same. They all start with the C tilde. So, what happens if we try to change this to OG? Oops, not F. G. What if we do that and we save as? Let's save it as 2.og. Alright. Close these. Here's our 2.og. Let's see if this plays. It does play. But anyway, so we know it plays. Success. So we didn't have to really do anything too crazy. We just modified a couple of bytes. And like I said, since we identify that every one of these other files has that same thing where the first two bytes there are these C squiggly that need to be changed to OG, we could manually open each one of these up with 0 and 0 editor or HXD editor, modify those bytes for each of these, and then maybe rename these files to .og. But that's where scripting can come into play. So I hopped into Python. It took me a while to make the script because I'm not like a Python pro by any means. Um, so anyway, after fidgeting around, I uh, created this script here. And basically what it does is it sets the path so that when you run the script, it knows where to go to look for the files to do all this stuff right here. And basically what this says is for every file in the folder, so in C user sneaky mofo desktop music, and that's where this folder is, music, for every file with this extension, all right, you're going to open it. Um, and then you're going to, this is where you would specify an offset for bytes that you wanted it to find. And this will write whatever bytes you specify to that offset. Then it'll close the file. And then I had it basically, uh, it's going to rename the files to .ogg. So when I run this, all these, we should see them change to .ogg. There they go, they've changed the og. And now, because I also had, them, or had that script overwrite the first two bytes, I can just double click on any of these. And perfect. So... That's it. If you want to take it a step further, you could even implement like, you know, FFmpeg and convert these to MP3s if you wanted to or whatever else. So anyway, that was a fun little task. Um, something simple, a good simple example, but just try poking around in files with hex editors. And later on, I'm going to start getting into like uh, PE browsers and all kinds of other stuff where you can really start digging around in files and reverse engineering things. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Like I said, it's just a very, very quick intro to hex editors and scripting. So if you hear a lot of these things, um, they're used in so many different capacities with hacking games, not just hacking games, you know, reverse engineering and hacking in general, but um, this should kind of familiarize you with these things. Uh, whenever I actually start doing some more in-depth tutorials coming up on this stuff. So thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe and check out other videos if you haven't yet. And I'll just talk to you all in the next one. Take care.